so welcome back. In our last video, we talked about humidity and how to get rid of it on a boat because especially being a liveaboard, it's a big problem. Number one was ventilation and our ventilation is either it's undersized or it's very loud. Yeah, or non-existent. So in this episode, we're gonna go through and we're gonna upgrade the ventilation we have and install new ventilation. So it's starting off with the galley, uh, putting in ventilation there or upgrading the ventilation in our heads. Which one do you wanna do first? <laughs> the heads. Well, off we go to the heads. Join us on the Elliott as we realize our five-year plan with the kids grown up, moved out, graduated from college, we take the dog, sold everything, and kitted out the boat so we can cruise the Pacific Northwest all while living and working in the heart of Seattle. So before we head down to the heads, we have to stop at the pilot house here first. You might say, what the heck does that have to do with ventilation for the heads? Well, underneath here are where the two squirrel cages are, one for each head. And they, they must have started with the squirrel cages and then built the whole boat around them. Because right now, when you take this helm off, it has an entire fiberglass shroud around it that's part of this entire helm. And you can peer into it, you can see them, but you can't touch them. So, we're going to have to jump in, take this off, and we're going to have to cut a section of that fiberglass out. Uh, it's not going to be a problem for any structural issues or anything and it's probably gonna pay off later because we'll actually be able to get in there and upgrade some of our gauges in our next project which will be upgrading sensors and gauges but enough about that let's go tear some shit apart that stinks Sorry. the only way to access the fans was to cut the fiberglass in the helm because navigator built it all in so there was no other option other than cutting a chunk out don't worry you'll be fine here. All right, so part one of this project is done, and that's ripping all of the old stuff out, which, so these were the three-inch squirrel cages that were loud as can be. They're by Jabsco, and my experience is that Jabsco makes the loudest products ever made <laughs> so and they like bad. to slap things like quiet all over them their toilets are noisy they say quiet these squirrel cages are noisy now let's go put the rest of the stuff in all right so this coming out yeah and we're gonna either wash this or replace it because it's gross i've tried to clean these but it's got 10 years or the And when they installed this, these are four inch ducts, and they just duct taped in three inch hose, which significantly cuts the cubic foot per minute. Ta-da, done. Since they had three inch, they had a reducer from the four inch bent to the three inch. We're gonna go to four inch, because it should increase the cubic foot per minute by about 40 to 50% from what I've read on tables, but it'll be a tight fit to get all this horse shit up through here. Now, I'll screw this, take advantage of that. And then, make sure it doesn't fall off. We will also throw a hose clamp on in here. There's a boat and it vibrates. And shit falls off. Here's the new fan solution that we have selected for the Elliott. Uh, this one is called AC Infinity. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, it, they have really high uh, satisfaction ratings. You know, I think they hover in the four and a half to five stars. Uh, they're very quiet, 28 decibels. They draw very little power, 21 watts. With systems like this, they're gonna be running on your boat almost continuously, especially in the winter to control condensation, having the lowest wattage possible is absolutely key. These types of smaller uh, systems that really can draw down your battery bank over the course of a day. Now, that being said, this one is 28 decibels, which is whisper quiet. The Jabsco ones that we have in the head that we're replacing in this project, they were over 80 decibels. They're extremely loud. <laughs> 
Um, that's not bad if you're out on a weekend trip or even a two week trip on your boat, but if you live on your boat, it'll drive you insane. This is an AC system. So a lot of people don't wanna switch their systems over to AC. I totally understand that. Atwood has a new four inch uh, fan that is actually supposed to be engineered to be much quieter than the last ones. I think they only draw 30 watts or so. That's not that bad. Uh, they sounds like they put some some real time into it. We just really wanted to switch over to even even lower wattage draw with these. Atwood won't publish their their decibel rating on their their new fans, which always leaves me a little bit suspicious. But these particular ones, uh, they do publish it, and if they're in an enclosed space after they're mounted. You literally can't hear them, but they do a great job. They're 205 CFM. Uh, that's really limited by the size of the, the hose that you're able to put on it or the ducting. Uh, so if you go to a six inch, you can really jump up in your, your CFM, but this is about as much as we can do with the space we have for our ducting. 205 CFM sounds terrible, but the squirrel cages that we had in the heads, uh, they were 105. and you know, so this is actually almost doubling our, our CFM or the volume that we're going to move out of them. And the one last thing is this does come with a variable speed controller. Um, that variable speed controller is nice, especially in the galley where you don't maybe want to have uh, this thing on full speed. You want to have it on a lower speed. Uh, you can do that as well. We'll put a link down below for the Atwood solution too. With the new fans installed and all the ducting run, things are definitely much quieter, but the real moment of truth will come when we run a shower and see if we can rapidly reduce the humidity level in the heads. Okay, you got as high as 76, it's at 73, so let's keep an eye on this. And after 20 minutes, we're down to 58% humidity. That's uh, about 20 points. Uh, definitely worth the upgrade. In the galley, of course, I like to cook. And there's a lot of steam, there's smell. I like to use my Instant Pot, which creates quite a bit of steam when you release that. So we're trying to figure out the best way to approach that in the galley. So that led us to a whole bunch of different ways that we thought about tackling this problem. One, we talked about having a pop-up downdraft. We've had those in houses before. Uh, we've scoped out everything behind this cooktop. There is no room. They left not an inch <laughs> as far as space, which is great. That means all the space is here so we can live in it, but it stinks when you're trying to think about retrofitting and any type of ventilation. Uh, we then kind of looked at maybe the overhead area and venting up through the, the bridge helm no space up there. Uh, we'd have to cut into our headliner as well. It just ended up being a no-go. We looked at possibly behind here where we have our electrical runs. That was completely blocked up as well. Uh, behind the refrigerator, venting here. The refrigerator actually consumes all the space all the way back into this area, so we can't use that as well. We were almost ready to give up. Uh, we were even talking about crazy stuff like putting in a uh, an expandable heater hose that you use in ski boats to be able to warm yourself up after you get out of the water. And we were going to put it behind the settee up here and pull it over so that we could be able to, you know, be able to have a draft. We're getting able... desperate. Yeah. What are we going to do? And then it finally dawned on us with the super easy solution is that we could basically create a hood across here, pop open a two inch ventilation space here. It's probably can afford, we'd rather have four inch. Basically ventilate it over the top of the microwave convection oven with the hose. And sometimes this microwave convection oven gets super hot. Mm -hmm. So we're also gonna ventilate behind that to make sure that you know, we keep that nice and cool and we don't have to worry about any electrical fires because I think it was a shitty design to begin with by the factory. And we'll just solve that problem with ventilation in both areas. So this is the hood that we picked up from Ballard Sheet Metal Works that they fabricated for us. Uh, pretty straightforward. We basically just measured out this space. That gives us just enough catch all the way across this cooktop to be able to draft all of the steam into the vent. These guys did a great job. I mean, the welds are beautiful on the end. Uh, you know, they did a nice job with the vent hole as well. And it's a nice brushed stainless, super heavy construction that matches all the rest of the stainless in the galley as well. So, time to get at it, but this thing's beautiful. It's like a piece of jewelry. I'm excited. Yeah, and it, 
it doesn't look like uh, you know we kind of hacked something together. Hopefully, at the end of it, it actually looks like something that the factory would have installed back in the day when the boat was built in 2010. Let us know what you think once this whole thing is done. So this area has absolutely no insulation in it. So we are going to take care of that. And then you can see right back there underneath the settee is where all of our ventilation hoses are going to be able to run nice and tidy with a good straight run because bends, well, they restrict airflow and we need as much airflow as possible in this ventilation system, especially since we have, we have reduced size on our vent hose just because we don't have enough space to do, well, a larger three to four inch hose. So to tackle the heat insulation on the convection microwave oven space, we have a mylar tape and we also have a mylar uh, cellular insulation. So this should be able to, it will really keep the heat much more reflected and concentrated in that area and then we'll have the ventilation to draw the heat out, which should be much safer and control the heat much better than what the factory setup is. So this will be the piece that we cut out that will go on the top. We'll just keep doing this all the way around the entire surface area of the inside of the convection oven space. All right, so we had Tap Plastics make this for us. It's basically going to go on the back of the enclosure. And it has a nice 4-inch ducting hose here to be able to ventilate behind the convection oven. Uh, we'll also need to pop another hole into this that's 2 inches to be able to feed the hose for the stove top. And then going on the back of that, we have a, a duct mounting plate uh, for the four inch hose. We'll screw that right here on the back of it to make sure it's got something nice to mate up to. And then we'll have a Y. They're not my favorite, but this is the way it's gonna work. Uh, that Y will have a two to four inch uh, reducer to be able to take the hose from the top of the vent. Uh, obviously we'll vent the back of this enclosure as well and then this will lead to the four inch hose which goes to the new fan here's our two inch corrugated rigging hose that we're going to be putting in for the ventilation over the cooktop so really now it's just a matter of making sure we get the routing right uh, we'll pop a hole in the back of our backing board as well to be able to exit this out and then we start putting holes in the boat. Never an exciting thing, but uh, I think we've got this measured out pretty well and we've got tons of clearance. So we'll do that and then we'll be able to put the hood in, put in all of this ventilation hose and then we'll get to the fan and enlarging the holes on the side of the boat as well as adding one for this particular project. After drilling a hole in the cabinetry, we were able to run the ducting for the cooktop. All right, now we've got the finished pieces in here. So this is the back plate that we constructed. This is now drilled with the two inch hole. So this is going to be the, uh, the, the stove hood vent hose. And we have tons of clearance now for the actual microwave, that's good. And then this here is the four inch vent hole so that we vent this entire area now it's time to insulate everything to make sure that uh, you know, nothing gets too hot in here. They didn't do that from the factory. I don't like that idea, so it's going to be insulated now. With the insulation complete, it's time to start drilling holes for the new vents on the side of the boat. We took off a clamshell in order to access the vents and are going to put in new vents on the exterior, as well as cut a new hole for the galley. So then we will have all brand new vents on the exterior. With the exhaust and the intake all tidied up, uh, we were able to install our fans. And there is the Y that brings together the cooktop ventilation as well as the ventilation behind the microwave. Now the question is, will it bring down the humidity in the galley? Now it's pretty high humidity for the morning. So we'll turn on the fan at half speed see what happens in about 15 minutes. We're down to 58. Not too bad. It's nine points. That really takes a lot of humidity out of the boat. 
especially on a day that's 100% humidity outside. So no fogged up windows and a lot more comfortable. So as a wrap up to the day, the hood's now installed. We just tested out a pan of water. The hood turned out nice. Three screws up above uh, to anchor it. Very high bond tape as well. So between those two things, uh, we don't have any issues with vibration or anything. I consider it a successful project. I will say that when we tested it with the boiling water, it picks up probably on a heavy rolling boil, maybe 60% of the steam, it's not 100%. When we have something simmering, it picks up probably a good 80, 90%. Definitely much better than the factory Way option, better. which was Nothing. two things, jack and shit. And jack left town. We're gonna put this one in the books, but I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. How about the chef? You happy? I am. I'm super happy because now I can cook and it has a place to go. Yeah, you don't so, have to open every hatch and door in the boat. Right. So we're chilling like Bob Dylan. Peace out. See you guys next time. It really does an amazing job. So, 